Howdy friend, welcome to Homegrown. I'm your host, R.P. Smith. I put in some road time this week traveling north to Stapleton, Nebraska to help some friends sort and move pears to grass, then traveling southwest to Binkelman the next day to be part of my son Wyatt's branding team. The favors will be reciprocated next week when it's time for the Pinecrest calves to be worked. I'm fascinated by the diversity our state has to offer in topography, flora, and fauna, and viewing the variety of soil and plant types up close this week reinforced my belief that the best way to harvest this diversity is through the use of adapted rumina animals. After a morning's work in the sand hills, I was treated to a wonderful meal consisting of beef, cheese, potatoes and asparagus, complemented with copious amounts of cool water from the upper reaches of the Ogallala Aquifer. A person can live mighty good on what this part of the world has to offer. Although the dairy and vegetable portions of the diet can require some extra effort. Let's backtrack a few years down a sand hills trail with a poem inspired by a story told to a friend by someone who either was or knew someone that was directly involved. I call this one Asparagus. The other cowboys called him Hap, a likable and friendly chap. Not the first job that he worked, but the first one for a wage. The oldest son of Mr. Jones, his smile topped a span of lanky bones. Just a teenage boy, he was a tall one for his age. It was springtime on that Sand Hill range. Life in the bunkhouse, not much change to the cramped and close quarters of a homestead shack. Live each day, no thought of fate. Do your job and pull your weight. For living the cowboy life, Hap thought he had the knack. The hours long, you know the reason, for it was late in cabin season. Soon the Hereford cows would be on summer range. While stretching up the border fence, a co-worker thought Hap had lost his sense. His behavior suddenly was bordering on the strange. Hap stepped from his raw-boned nag to fill his saddle bag with a plant that he was clipping to the ground. His pard was puzzled by the scene. Not just the cows were craving green. Hap pulled his knife to pillage a patch of asparagus he had found. His pard could hardly see the need for oblong chunks of weed, but hungry Hap's enthusiasm was contagious. He could not wait to eat his fill and witness the kid's culinary skill. Conversion to herbivore would soon border on outrageous. A cook stove fired by buffalo wood had the bunkhouse smelling good. Hap's frame bit in an arc, waiting for the pan to boil. Butter was out of the question, but memories of home spawned a suggestion. A cup of milk would really make his efforts worth the toil. But milk was as scarce as Sand Hill's gold till his parge plan did unfold. We're babysitting 500 head of wet Hereford cows. They're coming in now for a drink. We can snag some milk quick as a wink. Thought of how Mama made it, Hap's hunger did arouse. There was no need to saddle up to solicit donation of just one cup. Head and heel the first white face that dared to quench her thirst. The snubbin' post was near the tank. They could take what they needed while she drank. Two loops were readied and Hap would throw the first. His loop was true, but a little deep. His pard's heel loop only one would keep. And to top it off, Hap had missed his snub post dally. The cow's bellow came high and strong, calling to the herd a warning song. A thundering horde of agitation to the corral now did rally. The loop was low, the cow was rank, she took refuge in the tank, a wooden slide affair spanning thirty feet or so. Tension adjusted front and back, kept the cowboy's plan on track, 
their efforts for a gourmet meal did not slow. The leaking tank settled some dust, for through the side the cow did thrust, her free foot back working like a wrecking bar. Through the wet and raucous fray, the cowboys somehow found a way to procure their silky solicitation in a one-quart mason jar. Its contents not quite pure might have passed the soup de jour, but at least it would appear the volume ample. None of the cow's contribution wasted, no report on how it tasted, three parts milk, two parts snot, and one part fecal sample. Where once had been a water tank, now a puddle bordered by flattened plank. A cyclone could not have spread the water thinner. Repair duties the boys would not shirk. They would invest two weeks in the work, work that was commenced to directly after dinner. Thanks for riding along on the homegrown this morning. Hoping that the Lord blesses you real good today, that he is raining on your place, and that our happy trails cross again soon. I'm R.P. Smith.